I'll just say. Um, just a quick announcement. I was hoping to do this about five minutes ago, but it didn't happen. Would all the graduates please look at the program? Make sure that your name is in the program. If your name is not in the program, we have a backup plan. I have a little basket up here on the tables and a Sharpie. And if your name is not in the program, please come write your name clearly on an index card. If nobody's coming up, that's a really good sign. Oh, no. <laughs> Come right up here, please. Would everyone please be seated? Good afternoon and welcome. Dear graduates, family and friends, and esteemed guests, I am Dr. Margaret Martinetti, Associate Professor of Psychology and the Chair of the Psychology Department's Ceremonies Committee. I am delighted and honored to welcome you to the Psychology Commencement Ceremony for the class of 2017. Before we begin our official ceremony, I have two brief announcements. First, directly after the ceremony, the psychology faculty will be available to take pictures with you and your families. Please feel free to approach us because we look forward to congratulating you individually. And please remember to send us copies of your pictures or to share them with the Psychology Department's Facebook page. Second, if you haven't already been to Quimby's Prairie for some food and drink, um, all are welcome to join at the President's reception on Quimby's Prairie throughout the day. And now let us begin. To start, I would like to introduce the Chair of the Psychology Department, Dr. Janine Vavona, who will introduce the faculty and offer a few words to the graduates. Dr. Vavona. Hello, TCNJ class of 2017. It's my pleasure to introduce the faculty and staff of the psychology department. First, the faculty. Faculty, I know you don't like to, but please stand when I call your name. Jessica Barnack Tavlaris. Tamra. Tamara Beretta, Ashley Borders, Helen Chung, Jarrett Crawford, Jason Dolling, Candice Firing, James Graham, Joanna Harris, Art Hometh, Chu Kim Prieto, Andy Linus. Margaret Martinetti, Betsy Ruddy, John Ruscio, and Amy Stahl. A few faculty members are unable to be here today. Lisa Grimm, Jean Kernan, and Sean Wiley send their very best to the graduates. On the other hand, we are pleased to have fellow psychologist and associate provost Mosin Aron here um, at our ceremony. And I would also like to do, introduce our department staff who have contributed so much to the successes we celebrate today. Maddie Anthes is our program coordinator. She's right there. And Erin Hawhey is our department, uh, our program assistant. Reluctantly sitting. 
For us in the psychology department, this is a bittersweet day. We have gotten to know you, students, over your years at TCNJ. We like to see your faces in our hallways and hear your thoughts in our classrooms. We enjoy helping you develop your minds, interests, and expertise as our students, research collaborators, instructional interns, and internship supervisees. We relish your successes, and believe it or not, we don't mind the occasional moments of sadness and frustration, which we know are inevitable when you are facing the challenges of life head on. We know you will take us along with you as you move beyond TCNJ, that you will remember us and what we have taught you. But you may not know that we will keep a part of you here with us. We will remember you and we will miss you. It's true. It's true that other students will come along to take the seats in our classes and our offices, but they will not be you. We hope that you will keep in touch with us as you move beyond TCNJ so that we may follow you into the wide world wherever you may go. Thank you, our psychology majors, for sharing yourselves with us during your time at TCNJ. And thank you, dear family and friends, for lending us these wonderful young people who so enrich our lives and make our work such a joy. Congratulations and best wishes to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Vavona. Next, I would like to introduce the Interim Assistant Dean of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, Dr. Ann Warner-Alt. She is here to offer a few words to our graduates this afternoon. Welcome, Dr. Warner-Alt. Good afternoon, everyone, and congratulations to the graduates. I'm here representing Dean Jane Wong, who couldn't be present at all the departmental ceremonies this afternoon. Our community in humanities and social sciences is so large that we are unable to have a school-wide ceremony. Nevertheless, the Dean's office team is eager and pleased to connect with our graduating students, their family, and their friends on this special day. I also teach Spanish here at TCNJ, and I see a lot of familiar faces, so I'm just so happy to be here with our largest department on this wonderful day. Dear graduates, I would like to begin by noting that today we're all basking in your light. We're so proud of you and all that you've accomplished, both in the classroom, in the greater TCNJ community, and even around the world. Today we celebrate your accomplishments, but we must recognize that you could not have achieved all that we're celebrating without the dedicated support of your parents, your friends, and your family, many of whom are with you here today. Dear family members and friends of the graduates, thank you for sharing with us over the past few years your sons and daughters, your brothers and sisters, and your grandchildren, and thank you for the important role that you've played in their success. Students and faculty, please join me in thanking your loved ones for all their support today. <clears throat> Dear graduates, you came to TCNJ well prepared, yet over the past few years you have grown and developed in truly significant ways. You've learned to evaluate the arguments of others and to frame your own arguments, to formulate hypotheses, collect and analyze data, draw your own conclusions and present them compellingly. You've developed these skills with the expert help of your faculty mentors. So if I may ask, could the family and friends and students please join me in thanking the faculty from the Department of Psychology. <laughs> Thank you. Who have worked so closely with our majors. At TCNJ, you, the graduates have all learned to pursue excellence. And you've done outstanding work in your classes, your internships, your labs, your guided research experiences, and while studying abroad and leading student organizations. 
I'm sure that not every experience or experiment turned out the way you hoped, but you've learned to persevere and to keep going. Dr. Martin Seligman, a UPenn professor of psychology and an author of several best-selling books, champions the qualities of perseverance and grit. He suggests that it is the combination of reasonable talent and the ability to keep going in the face of defeat that leads to success. While it's inevitable that you'll experience setbacks in life, we all know that you're all much more than reasonably talented and that you've developed the passion and the perseverance to weather any storm that life sends your way. We must be sure to celebrate when wonderful things happen and today is a fabulous day for you all. When you go to graduate school, to professional school, or to a successful career, we know that you'll soar to new heights. And when you do, please remember us at TCNJ in the School of Humanities and Social Sciences in the Psychology Department. Visit us, drop us a line or a text. Please let us know what you're doing and how you're doing. On this bittersweet day of goodbyes, we're confident of the future that rests in your hands. Thank you, congratulations, and please enjoy today's festivities. Thank you, Dr. Warner Olds. My department colleagues and I are pleased to introduce two of our graduates whom we have invited to offer you all some brief some remarks during today's ceremony. Our first student speaker is Abrara Beatty. Abrara Beatty is a psychology major and is earning a Spanish minor. During her time at TCNJ, Abrara was a college ambassador and a member of the Muslim Student Association. She played women's club lacrosse and was a committed member of the knitting club during her first year. Abrar has also served residence life and this year served as a sustained dialogue moderator. In the psychology department, Abrar was a research assistant in the alcohol lab for two semesters. Last summer, she completed her senior psychology internship in Jordan, working with Syrian refugees in the mental health clinic of the Syrian American Medical Society. Abrar is a traveler and passionate human rights activist and plans for a career serving others internationally. She continues to explore her options, but Doctors Without Borders may be in her future. Please join me in welcoming Abrar Abedi. Thank you, Dr. Martinetti. And thank you all for coming. I'm really tall, so can you all hear me? Yes. <laughs> Faculty, esteemed guests, family, and friends, thank you for joining us today. I'm honored to stand before you and speak on behalf of the class of 2017 and the psychology department. We never thought this day would come, but time just has a way of catching up to you. Like your capstone paper that you may or may not have pulled an all-nighter for, but you made it, and we live to tell the tale. I was asked to share some of my experiences as a psychology major here at TCNJ, so I'll take it from the top. Growing up in an Arab household, you get the privileges of good food and grandma's wisdom. My grandmother always told me that there is no beauty like the beauty of the mind. But beyond that, she always challenged me to have a beautiful mind and always to reflect. If there is one word that comes to thought when, when looking back at my experience as a psychology major, it is reflection. There is an innate power that lies in our ability to challenge our thoughts, to get outside of our comfort zones, and above all, to think critically. To enjoy the privileges of thought and contemplation, we must carry with us the knowledge that will empower us to such positions. As psychology majors, we know one thing too well. That, my friends, is reading. We read until our eyes hurt. We read until we had migraines. We read until we fell asleep on our laptops or the couches of the library. That's if you even made it that far out of bed. But most of all, we read. Now you may wonder why I mention reading. That is because in my four years at college, I have found myself constantly rejuvenated and captivated by this very simple act that we all take for granted. From forcing myself to read the Piper guidelines, to learning to question every article I read in Dr. Linus's cognitive neuroscience class, 
to reading and initialing every task on the protocol sheet in Dr. Martinetti's alcohol research lab. Whenever I found myself at a crossroads, I took to reading. I found power in reading when researching treatments for PTSD while interning with the Syrian American Medical Society at their mental health clinic with refugees. I witnessed the power of knowledge while observing educated refugees treat their fellow Syrians suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and many other disorders and diseases of the mind. I experienced the power of awareness when reading about the application of applied behavioral analysis techniques to help assist autistic children, and recalled the silent suffering of a refugee mother as she came to the clinic to learn how to deal with her autistic child, but was burdened with her grim and brutal reality. It seemed like the more I read and the more I saw, the less I knew and the more I wanted to grow. I found myself at another crossroads, the election of our 45th president. For many of us on campus, we felt separated. Regardless of where you stood on the political spectrum, there was a paradoxical sentiment of fear, divide, and yearning for unity. Normally, I would pick up a book or an article and to find comfort in my tribulations, but this time, I knew I had to do more. That's when I showed up in Dr. Crawford's office after never having met him before. I told him I liked his research and wanted to get involved. He directed me to the dialogue initiatives on campus, and he told me to go for it. Turns out, you can walk into any professor's office and ask them for help, even if you didn't know them. To be honest, my mind was blown for a few seconds. But then I remembered, I was at TCNJ, and this is the type of environment we promoted. Since I, like many other seniors, was a constant mess this semester, I'm not sure I ever gave him an appropriate response. Dr. Crawford, here's the anticipated update. <laughs> I should start by mentioning that I actually became a moderator and highlight the fact that I found strength in dialogue. You see, we can easily read, but what is strengthening is our capacity to fearlessly and respectfully share our ideas with those whose thoughts contradict ours and at times scare us. In our ability to converse with one another, we challenge ourselves to be changed. In dialogue, I discovered the skill of, of hearing to listen and not to respond. We learn to empathize and respect each other's opinions and experiences. We sacrifice the qualities that impair us and grow as individuals. In dialogue, we allow ourselves to be transformed. To the class of 2017, I would like to remind you that you are worthy. Let me be clear. I do not say to know your worth because I am afraid you may quantify yourself in a job, career, or number. I say know that you are worthy of being a force for change. I remind you to never forget who or what our degrees are for. They are for the young refugees whose bodies washed up on the shores of the vast and violent sea, those who made it to the front pages of our news stories, and those who did not. Our degrees are for the young black men who have found themselves targeted by the system of mass incarceration. Our degrees are for the Palestinian and Egyptian prisoners on hunger strike, and for all of those who are fighting with their lives for justice and equality. Our degrees are for us to serve the neglected and underserved members of our communities, our forgotten veterans, and those suffering from poverty. Our degrees are for us to be catalysts for change and for us to take what we have learned and delve forward into the, in, and delve forward into the world of chance and opportunity. Our degrees give us the courage not to fear change, but to inspire it. Above all, our degrees are for our family members, friends, faculty, and everyone who has supported us in our journey. I would be remiss not to thank everyone who has guided and supported me. A special thank you to Dr. Martinetti for being a mentor, a friend, and for always being ready to talk cultures, food, and travel, and for pushing me to be better. I am forever grateful. I am blessed to have been able to call TCNJ my home and feel safe and welcomed by my peers and faculty. Specifically, Dr. Wiley for checking up on me during times when being Muslim in America was scary. To my friends and family, those in attendance and absent, I thank you. My dad, my brother, and my sister for your support. Specifically to my sister for being the greatest unpaid secretary out there. My uncles and Nana. My stepdad for being so patient with me and for the never-ending supply of pretzels. My uncles and Nana, whose prayers are why I'm standing in front of you today, if you may, ex if you may excuse me while I thank her in her native tongue, Arabic. Nana, shukran ala da'watik, hadratik al khair wal baraka. And finally, my degree is for my mother. The queen herself and the greatest gift, who has believed in me and dreamt for me bigger than I could ever dream for myself, who has been the strongest person I know, raising three kids on her own, who never stood in the way of my dreams, but always pushed me forward. 
for teaching me that my service to humanity knows no race, religion, or culture. For being all that you are, my darling mother, this and the entirety of my being is for you. To the class of 2017, I leave you with a quote by Imam Ali. Your sickness is from you, but you do not perceive it. And your remedy is within you, but you do not sense it. You presume you are a small entity, but within you is enfolded the entire universe. You are indeed the evident book by whose alphabets the hidden become manifest. Therefore, you have no need to look beyond yourself. What you seek is within you if you only reflect. I challenge you to read, to listen, and above all, to reflect. Congratulations. Now go add your professors on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you, Abar. Our second student speaker is Aditi Mahapatra. <laughs> Aditi, or Addy, is completing a double major in psychology and public health with an interdisciplinary concentration in health communications. In the psychology department, she has been a research assistant in Dr. Chung's research on emer emerging adulthood and community health, or REACH lab, and has been inspired by Dr. Barnack Tavlaris's mentorship in health psychology and women's health. Outside of her academic interests, Aditi worked as a community advisor and mentored approximately 120 first year students since 2015. She has used her platform for socio-political activism initiatives, including spearheading a social justice exposition. Aditi has served as a counseling and psychological services peer educator patient ambassador for the National Organization for Rare Diseases and Disability Advocate. After TCNJ, Aditi hopes to continue working on the intersection of health policy, advocacy, and improving patient outcomes globally for vulnerable populations. Please welcome Aditi Mahapatra. Hello, and welcome to everyone who is here today. To our esteemed psychology faculty, thank you for your constant motivation, for inspiring us to be the best scholars we can be inside the classroom, and for pushing us to be the best human beings we can be in the world. We extend gratitude to you for being role models, mentors, and vessels of guidance for us. I would specifically like to thank Dr. Chung and Dr. BT for exemplifying what it means to have someone to look up to on a daily basis. To guests here today, family and friends, thank you for your support, love, and encouragement. We would not be where we are today without your helping hands to lift us up when we've needed it. To my parents, thank you for unconditionally loving me and supporting me. And a special thank you to my grandfather, who flew 8,000 miles from Mumbai to New York to be here today to celebrate. <laughs> I would also like to recognize the people who could not make it here today, or those who are no longer with us, for we carry your impact, light, and love with us wherever we go. Last, but most definitely not least, to the class of 2017, congratulations. We are finally here. When we think of the beginning of our college experience, we each have our own unique and distinct recollections, whether those include staining family members' clothing with tears as you wept goodbye on freshman move-in day, having your clothing stained with tears as your family members wept on you, having, trying to figure out what meal equip was, or accidentally calling one of your professor's mom during the second week of class like I did. I began my first day of college on August 27, 2013, expecting the next four years to be easy. Easy in a non-traditional sense. I'd experienced what I considered significant adversity during high school. At age 17, I was diagnosed with a rare chronic autoimmune disease. Graduating high school on time in itself was a miracle for me. I had missed seven months of my senior year of high school and brought home the best worst attendance award with a whopping 135 days in this school. Thus, I had naturally assumed my experience at TCNJ would be easier. I was quickly proven otherwise. 
I was quickly proven wrong as my first year showed otherwise. In the spring of my freshman year, I lost a close family member, and the summer after, I came close to losing my own life from sepsis, a chronic illness complication. I was mistaken. Adversity was not an isolated experience of simply high school. However, through my four years at college, although I realized not only was adversity not an isolated experience of high school, it was not an isolated experience of simply my life. Adversity surrounds all of us. It weaves its way into life and will wax and wane in its course. At my time here, I have met people who have climbed the steepest mountains, valleys of unimaginable loss, being buried by infuriating social inequalities, physical or mental illness, or challenging home and family situations. Problems, large and small, present themselves to us throughout our whole existence. Problems on a smaller scale have found a way to creep into life, whether those include bad days, bad grades, challenging classes, long lines at the library cafe, or undependable .1x Wi-Fi. <laughs> Regardless of how determined, intelligent, or happy-go-lucky we are, we will encounter struggle, challenges, difficulties, and at times, heart-wrenching moments. Today, many of us are wearing stoles, cords, and other regalia around our neck to represent our successes, accomplishments, and involvements here at TCNJ. However, we do not wear cords of failures, mistakes, or challenges we have overcome. Typically, we do not take pride in the errors we have made, the breakdowns, the what-ifs, the hesitations. I, however, view those as most valuable in defining our character, worth, and who we are as human beings. How we react to negativity and the compassion, empathy, and resilience we foster and develop from tribulation is as telling of who we are as human beings as being the president of an organization, inductions into honor societies, or dean's list status. Through personal interactions with others, whether they are residents, classmates, or members of a shared organization, at TCNJ, learning the importance of understanding others' experiences became imperative to my understanding of the world, whether that is inclusive of personal adversity or identities that make people unique. Race, gender, ability, sexuality, socioeconomic status, immigration status, or cultural and ethnic background, to being open-minded, curious, and learning from what others have to offer us. When we speak of experience, social identity, and compassion, I think about examples in our country and world where there is more divide than understanding of social identities and these personal experiences. As citizens of the world entering real life soon, we have a lot of injustices in this world calling our name to be worked on. Racial and gender inequality, health disparities, mental health care accessibility, refugee crises, civil unrest, housing insufficiencies, and political corruption. You name it, it is there. It feels daunting as a fresh out of college graduate to think about these things in a setting exterior to the classroom, outside the context of a textbook. The world and its problems start to feel too expansively immense. However, I recently stumbled upon a quote which reads, people who really want to make a difference in the world usually do it, in one way or another. And I've noticed something about people who make a difference in the world. They hold the unshakable conviction that individuals are extremely important, that every life matters. They get excited over one smile. They are willing to feed one stomach, educate one mind, and treat one wound. They aren't determined to revolutionize the world at once. They're satisfied with small changes. Over time, though, the small changes add up. Sometimes they transform cities, nations, and yes, the world. Thankfully, someone told me that there is a cohort of really intelligent, dedicated psychology students graduating today who can use their training, intellect, and passions for social science of behavior and mind to change this world. As scholars of psychology, we have been lucky enough to have professors who incorporate caring and understanding the mechanisms of human beings and the world into our course of study. That, along with our training in critical thinking, problem solving, and a lot of SPSS analysis, we are prepared to take on the challenges that lie in front of us. Only 6.7% of the global population is privileged enough to have a college degree. And today, we join this small group of human beings who have a responsibility to the world to do better, to do good, and to make change, 
to use the empathy we have developed, the knowledge we have gained, and the belief in ourselves and our abilities. The scholarly source of Spider-Man once said, with great power comes great responsibility. And today, I hope we all embrace this responsibility. After my high school graduation, I had quoted a passage from Gray's Anatomy. Looking back, quoting this passage as a 17-year-old who was clueless about the world felt a little too big, kind of like a pair of pants that were a few sizes too large. But today, this passage feels just right. And don't worry, faculty, I can produce an API, APA citation if needed. Class of 2017, I leave you with this. Today is the day my life begins. Today, I become a citizen of the world. Today, I become a grown-up. Today, I become accountable to someone other than myself and my parents, accountable for more than my grades. Today, I become accountable to the world, to the future, to all of the possibilities that life has to offer. Starting today, my job is to show up wide-eyed, willing, and ready. For what? I don't know. For anything, for everything. To take on life, to take on love, to take on the responsibility and possibility. Today, my friends, our lives begin, and I, for one, can't wait. Thank you. Thank you, Aditi. The Senior Honors Thesis Program in the Department of Psychology provides an opportunity for advanced psychology students to conduct an intense independent research project across two semesters. Although the Senior Honors Thesis students work under the guidance of a faculty sponsor and thesis committee, the work is very much their own. They conceive, plan, and execute their own studies, prepare a written thesis manuscript, and deliver an oral presentation describing their work. Senior Honors Thesis students have worked extremely hard to bring their thesis projects to completion, and several of them will continue to work with their faculty sponsors after graduation as they prepare their manuscripts for publication in peer-reviewed journals. Each year, only a small number of students receive the distinction of completing Senior Honors Theses. It is with great pleasure that the department will now present Senior Honors Thesis certificates to these outstanding students. I invite all the Senior Honors Thesis students to join us in front of the stage at this time. Faculty sponsors, please gather here to the right of the podium and remain here until all of the thesis students have been recognized. For each thesis project, I will read the student's name, the name of the faculty sponsor, the names of the committee members, and the title of the thesis. Students, when your name is called, please join your faculty sponsor to my left to receive your certificate. Then please return to the floor to join your thesis peers. Committee members, please stand when your name is called. Family members, you are welcome to come into the front aisle to take pictures. If you are following along in the program, I have grouped the students by faculty mentor. Melissa A. Albert. <laughs> faculty sponsor, Sean Wiley but Jason Dawling is here on Dr. Wiley's behalf. Committee members, Elizabeth Basola and Julie Hughes. There's a place for us, increasing school identification via subgroup respect among college students of color. Congratulations. <laughs> Merrill Levitt. Faculty sponsor, Jason Dawling. Committee members, Andrew Linus and Sean Wiley. A connectionist model of followership. Is gender a feature of follower prototypes? Congratulations.
Kajal Patel. <laughs> Faculty sponsor, Jason Dolling. Committee members, Amy Stahl and Sean Wiley. The effects of word of mouth on applicant intentions. Congratulations. Kaylin Crawford. <laughs> Faculty sponsor, Dr. Andrew Linus. Committee members, Tamara Beretta and Chu Camprieto. Effects of encoding focus on recollection and visual source monitoring event related potentials. Congratulations. <laughs> Brittany Mock. Faculty sponsor, Andrew Linus. Committee members, Tamara Beretta, Chu Camprieto. Encoding focus alters diagnostic and non-diagnostic recollection. Congratulations. <laughs> Danny Gallagher. <laughs> Faculty sponsor, Lisa Grimm. Committee members, Andrew Linus and Betsy Ruddy. The effects of game making on cognition and STEM interest. Congratulations. <laughs> Christine Dunn. <laughs> Faculty sponsor, Candice Firing. Committee members, Janine Vavona, Sean Wiley. Event-specific representations of negative emotional reactivity in couple narratives, variations by viewpoint and gender. Congratulations. <laughs> Jessica Marcus. <laughs> Faculty sponsor, Candice Firing. Committee members, Jessica barnack Tavlaris. Helen Chung. Perspective taking in romantic conflict narratives. Viewpoint, gender, and associations with relationship functioning. Congratulations. <laughs> Olivia M. Laura. <laughs> Faculty sponsor, Tamara Beretta. Committee members, Jarrett Crawford and Andrew Linus. Age-related differences in the associative deficit hypothesis when utilizing a sentence strategy. Congratulations. <laughs> Caitlin Loika. Yeah. <laughs> Faculty sponsor, Chu Camprieto. Committee members, Helen Chung, John Ruscio. The effect of subtle stereotype on food choice. Congratulations. <laughs> Jenna Marr. <laughs> Faculty sponsor, Julie Hughes. Committee members, James Graham and Sean Wiley. Letters across red lines, the effects of a pen pal experience on children's attitudes toward racial and economic outgroups. Congratulations. <laughs> Shirley Wang, faculty sponsor. <laughs> Ashley Borders, committee members, Janine Vavona, Sean Wiley. The unique effects of anger and depressive rumination on eating disorder psychopathology and the mediating role of impulsivity. Congratulations. <laughs> and last but not least, Ariane Jacinta Ramos, faculty sponsor, <laughs> is me. <laughs> Committee members, Jessica Barnick-Tavlaris and Betsy Ruddy. 
the effects of environmental enrichment on behavioral economic demand for alcohol in Long Evans Rats, a replication. Congratulations. Please join me in congratulating all of our senior honors thesis students. Thank you. You may return to your seats, students. Several of our graduates have been inducted into PSYCHI, the International Honor Society in Psychology. You can identify PSYCHI members by the blue and gold honor cords they are wearing today. I'd like to ask all of the members of PSYCHI to stand as we applaud your accomplishments. A select few of our graduating class have completed the college honors program. These students wear large medallions, or I think so, large medallions on graduation day. Once accepted into the college honors program, these students complete a series of intensive honors courses during their time at TCNJ. I would like to ask the members of the college honors program to stand as we recognize your achievements. And so now, it is time for the awarding of diplomas to the psychology graduates for the class of 2017. <laughs> Dr. Amy Stahl and Dr. Ashley Borders will read the names of the graduates, and Dr. Andrew Linus will assist Dr. Janine Vavona in distributing the diploma covers. In addition to your diploma, Dr. Helen Chung will give you a yellow carnation, assisted by Dr. Jessica Barnick Tavlaris, to symbolize the faculty's admiration for all that you have accomplished. Graduates, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your diploma cover from Dr. Vavona at the tables in front of the stage, and then walk across the front to receive your carnation. You may then return to your seat. Please return via your left, to minimize the traffic in the front. So you may have to step across a large cord, just beware, okay. Okay, let's get started. Okay, Carly Rachel Adam. Akshay Agarwal. Idris Olaniyi Ajibulu. Melissa Ashley Albert. Elizabeth G. Ambos. Nabila Anika. Gina Marie Anzalone. Bridget Kathleen Appleby. Jack Fury Baldwin. Emily Bayer Barto. Alyssa Bayer. Erin Marie Brendel. Misty Boudoir, Jennifer Marie Burke, Angeline Santos Cabrales, Kelly Cantwell, Alexis Christine Carp, Courtney Lynn Carcillo, 
Maria Carmen Saccone. Maria Carmela M. Closa. Casey Lee Conti. Kaylin Jennifer Crawford. Margaret Julia Sear Ogamak. Leanne Nicole Davidson. Destiny De La Rosa. Ashley Nariman Demaleas. Maria L. Descindio. Christine Rose Dilly. Christine Marie Dunn. Abrar Ibedi. Sandra Stacy Eisen. Claudia Rose Emmanuel. Talia Everett. Marissa Fernandez. Sean Douglas Fitzmaurice. Danielle Ray Flaherty. <laughs> Melissa K. Foti. <laughs> Nicole Lynn Fowler. Melissa Wendy Garfinkel. Claudia Danielle Gargano. Michael Ann Giansanti. Zuri J. Gill. Emma Devin Gilson. Woo! Jennifer Nicole Gobel. Woo! Joe Gonzalez Goldstein. Woo! Keaton Onthank Gray. Thais M. Guastali. Serena M. Gupta. Douglas F. Hammond. Kristen Anna Hassenkamp. Iuliana Ibarra. Fadi Ibrahim. Rachel Mary John. Shruti R. Kanthan. Jessica Rachel Kennick. Jacqueline Alexa Kukoff. Shelby Lynn Kuster.
Rebecca Rose Lanham. Cassandra Rose Laletti. Suyun Lee. Julia Anna Lester. Jared Ross Levin. Merrill R. Levitt. Caitlin Michelle Loika. Colleen Mary Magley. Dean A. Manning. Emily Ann Maragni. Jessica Sarah Marcus. Alexa Ray Martinez. Courtney N. Masker. Sophia Mastroianni. Leanne Marie Miller. Tatiana B. Mingo. Brittany Ariel Mock. Maggie Muley. Corey James Nebia. Caitlin Elise Nahila. Elizabeth Megan O'Connor. Tara Rose O'Reilly. Melanie Lee Orr. Kajal Rajan Patel. Kiran Paresh Patel. Lauren Michelle Plowker. Melissa Ann Pliskin. Maya Sophia Possel. Rick A. Pratel. <laughs> Natalie Ann Principato. <laughs> Olivia Claire Prusnik. <laughs> Courtney Ann Puka. <laughs> Nishan Adam Rahman. Kristen Ramos. Ariane Jacinta C. Ramos. Jennifer J. Ricciardi. Christina Ratota. Emily Lynn Roberts. Jessica Lee Roman. Brianna Eileen Ryan.
Juan Francisco Segovia. Catherine Ann Senko. Shivani Shaw. Diana Victoria Smith. Casey Elizabeth Salazu. Jason Sparan. Mariah Philomena Springer. Elizabeth Stemetsky. Taylor Victoria Stevens. Beth Lindsay Strumpf. Nicole Steuben. Ijal Lakil Thompson. Donan Tran. Rachel Rosemary Turin. John Charles Turner, Jr. Megan Marjorie Van Slot. Pierre R. Vanescar. Kendall Ann Walker. Shirley Bao Wang. Brittany Wechrick. Vincent Samuel Wilson. Tall Zeusman. All right, we're on to our dual majors. <laughs> David J. Adlai Gale. Jennifer Ashley Barbara. Christine Diana Beverin. Samantha Ray Bolognese. Ryan Thomas Borchers. Emily Elaine Bussman. Melanie Chella. Natalie Chaux. Divya Banarsa Chohan. Kelly Brooke Kafrida. Elizabeth Mary Cornell. Elisa Cruz. Madeline, Madeline Jean Deck. Kelly Diogo. 
Cassidy Rose Ditola. <laughs> Leah Michelle Duford. <laughs> Jasmine Danielle Dupree. <laughs> Gabrielle Karen Evans. Megan Elizabeth Fearon. Daniel Thomas Gallagher. Mariella Emera Hanna. Catherine Rose Hansel. Amalia Maria Canaris. Dana Nicole Nice. Ashley Puling Lai. Olivia Marin Laura. Jessica Carey Ledbetter. Sarah Elizabeth Lesnick. Brenna Michelle Levy. Emily C. Lloyd. Aditi Grover Mahapatra. Jenna Michelle Moyer. Megan Marie McCauley. Sarah Astra Melamed. Kevin Alberto Moncayo. <laughs> Hannah May Nizri. <laughs> Caroline Perez. <laughs> Courtney Ann Pfeiffer. Alyssa Hiller Portnoy, Georgia Rose Racanelli, Rebecca Reinhard, Matthew Carl Riello, Carla Rose Rizzi. Kaylee Nicole Russell. Dana Noel Sangiacomo. Garrett Kenny Seville. Kimberly Elizabeth Seal. Ashley Vivian Tacone. <laughs> Heather Eileen Weinberg. Yeah! Caitlin Allison Wilkie. Let's all give our graduates a warm round of applause.
Félicitations. In closing, I would like to thank all the psychology faculty who volunteered to make today's ceremony run so smoothly, especially Dr. James Graham, for his many contributions on the ceremonies committee with me this year. Thank you, Dr. Borders and Dr. Stahl, for reading the graduates' names so beautifully, and all my dear colleagues for your help preparing for today's ceremony. I also thank our program assistant, Ms. Erin Hawhey, for producing the lovely commencement program and certificates for the senior honors thesis students, and our department program coordinator, Ms. Maddie Anthes, for preparing the slideshow of student pictures, video recording the ceremony, and for much logistical help. And lastly, thank you, psychology class of 2017, for all the ways that your hard work and enthusiasm for psychology have reinforced our love of teaching and learning. On behalf of the entire faculty, we most sincerely congratulate you and offer our wishes for much continued happiness and success. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of this wonderful day. I'll just say. Um, just a quick announcement. I was hoping to do this about five minutes ago, but it didn't happen. Would all the graduates please look at the program? Make sure that your name is in the program. If your name is not in the program, we have a backup plan. I have a little basket up here on the tables and a Sharpie. And if your name is not in the program, please come write your name clearly on an index card. If nobody's coming up, that's a really good sign. Oh, no. <laughs> come right up here, please. 